How do I choose my repertoire for exams, auditions, or competitions? This is the topic in today's video from my series, Practice Tips for Piano Students. When you're preparing an exam, audition, or competition, you need to carefully select your repertoire in order to show the best of what you can do, in order to show a big range of qualities to the jurors that are there to evaluate your performance. So what are those qualities? Number one, I would say a technical command of the instrument. You need to show that you're in complete control of the technical aspect of the pieces. And you need to prepare pieces within your level of proficiency. I see a lot of young pianists trying to play pieces that are clearly beyond their current level of ability. And that's not impressive. Not impressive to a juror and not impressive to an audience because young pianists could sound like they're struggling with those pieces. It doesn't matter what piece you play. You're not being evaluated on what pieces you play, but on how you play your pieces. So, fortunately for us pianists, there are very good pieces, very good technical pieces, and very impressive pieces at all levels of ability. So with the help of a teacher or another professional, you can pick pieces within your level of ability that are very, very impressive, both technically and musically. It is also important to have pieces where you can show your musicality, where you can let go of your imagination and just play a slow movement or play something without any worry about hitting right notes or wrong notes. So you need to pick pieces or movements within pieces that can show those qualities as well. Number three, you need to pick pieces that show your knowledge of a style, whether it's a Baroque style, classical, romantic because as you know, each style has little differences in terms of how you use your pedal, how you use your touch. Some pieces you can have a bigger, um, deeper tone. And in some styles you need to have a little lighter touch and also depends on what composers. There's a difference between playing Scarlatti or Soler or Beethoven. So you need to know those differences and your repertoire needs to show that. You need to show the jurors that you are knowledgeable of style. You also need to show that you have a knowledge of the repertoire and that you are able to pick pieces that are not exactly standard. So among the Haydn sonatas, there are three or four sonatas that everyone plays, but then there are a lot of other sonatas that you never hear about. So it's important to pick something that's out of the ordinary, that not everyone plays. That shows a knowledge of your repertoire or pieces, romantic pieces by composers that are very well known, such as Chopin or Schumann, but not the most played pieces by those composers. That shows that you have an interest in digging into the repertoire and bringing to the light some pieces that are not that standard, that are equally satisfying and equally impressive. A competition or exam or audition, it's also an opportunity to bring com new composers to the table, to introduce a composer as not very well known. And so that also shows your interest in um, looking into repertoire choices and picking something that's a little bit um, out of ordinary. 
that usually has a good effect on uh, jurors. I'm talking specifically now about the Latin American repertoire. How many Latin American composers for piano can you name? That's a question I like to ask all, always my colleagues and um, students because there are hundreds and hundreds of Latin American composers from every country in Latin America, and yet we can only name three or four. So I'm giving you specifically a composer that I like a lot. His name is Rafael Landestoy, a composer from the Dominican Republic, whom I met personally in one of my travels. His music is just beautiful, very romantic. And I have great pleasure playing his music at all kinds of events. I give his music to my students as well, so that they can perform it. But that's just one example. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that for a, an important event where you're being evaluated, you should try to impress the jurors with something different. They're very tired of listening to the same pieces over and over and over again. And unless you play them better than anybody else, you probably don't have a great chance of being considered among the best. Now, what are some of the other important considerations in choosing your repertoire for, for this kind of events? I think you need to look at feedback, feedback from your peers, from your teachers and from your family, because sometimes we get obsessed with certain pieces and we think we're going to be successful with certain pieces, but other people will let us know if we play those pieces well or not. I remember as a child, my mother and my father would always tell me, oh, this piece you're playing so well is every time you play just so beautiful, but this other piece doesn't come through that well. And yet those were pieces that I thought I was playing very well. And it was not the case. It was not the case. So you need to listen to other people because the way they listen to those pieces is probably the same way a potential juror will listen to those pieces. So always be open for feedback from your peers, family or teachers. You should also play pieces that you have played for a while. I do not recommend playing pieces that are newly memorized, newly learned for any kind of event, except a recital. That's maybe an informal recital because you do have to try new pieces at some point but please do not try new pieces in events where you will be evaluated because it shows. It shows the level of confidence that you have with the piece. It shows that you are worried about playing every single note right. And even if you do play every single note right, that comes as a surprise. You probably neglect a little bit of the musicality of the piece because you were extremely worried about just getting through that piece. That's not impressive. What's impressive is a performance of a piece, whether it's difficult or not, but a performance that's completely relaxed, that's completely very, very beautiful and engaged. So you can put the audience in a different level, not in a level where, where they're worried about are you going to make it through or not, but just listening with pleasure, listening to your pieces with pleasure. And I will insist that any piece you play has to be at your current level of ability. So those are some of the points that I consider important in choosing your repertoire. I hope this was helpful. And as always, I welcome 
any questions or any comments. And if I'm able to help, I will gladly do so. So until next time, this is Martin Soderberg. Good night.